Nat Turner, a wanted slave. Born on October 2, 1800 in Southampton, Virginia, Nat's mother believed he could describe events that took place before his birth as if he was a prophet, intended for some great purpose. Nat Turner had visions and heard voices. Once he was told to serve his earthly master, another vision was drops of blood on corn plus hieroglyphic characters and numbers. On May 12, 1828, Turner had his third vision. He said, I heard a loud noise in the heavens, and the spirit instantly appeared to me and said, The serpent was loosened, and Christ had laid down the yoke he had borne for the sins of man, and that I should take it on and fight against the serpent, for the time was fast approaching, when the first should be the last, and the last should be the first, and by signs in the heavens that it would make known to me when I should commence the great work. And until the first sign appeared, I should conceal it from the knowledge of men. And on the appearance of the sign, I should arise and prepare myself and slay my enemies with their own weapons. In February of 1831, there was an eclipse of the sun, and Turner took this as a sign and planned his insurrection with his four trusted friends, Henry, Hark, Nelson, and Sam. On August 13th, there was an atmospheric disturbance in which the sun appeared bluish green. This was the final sign. And a week later, on August 21st, Turner and six of his men met in the woods to eat a dinner and make their plans. They then set out to the Travis household, killing the entire family as they slept. The killing continued through the night, murdering white families from farm to farm, gathering guns and recruits. He gathered as many as 40 slaves for his insurrection. The next day, a militia was gathered to confront the slaves' insurrection. Turner's forces scattered and he was left to continue on with a much smaller group of enslaved men to continue this insurrection. As they attempted to attack another house, they were met with resistance. Some of Nat's men were captured and those who escaped were met with federal troops in the final skirmish. Turner did escape this skirmish but lost most if not all of his insurrectionists. In all, 55 white people were killed, mostly in their homes and unaware of the insurrection. Nat Turner hid in several different places near the Travis farm, but on October 30th he was discovered and captured. His confession was taken while he was imprisoned in county jail. On November 5th, Nat Turner was tried in the Southampton County Court and sentenced to execution. He was hung and then skinned on November 11th. Was Nat Turner a hero or insane fanatic? It would take one with empirical knowledge of bondage and slavery to really know and understand the answer to that question. It is stated that slavery was such an abomination it would drive men to violence. Slaves did not have the means to organize a revolt, so when they did, it was out of desperation. Some slaves who took part in the insurrection were hung, and the slave owners were reimbursed for the execution of their property. Consequently, 200 people of color, many who had nothing to do with the insurrection, were killed by mobs seeking what they considered justice. In addition, slaves as far away as North Carolina were accused of having a connection with the insurrection and were subsequently tried and executed. After his capture and arrest on October 30, 1831, Nat Turner was imprisoned in the Southampton County Jail, where he was interviewed by Thomas R. Gray, a Southern physician. Out of that interview came Nat's confession. Turner felt the embodiment of the Christian scriptures as if he was reliving the scriptures. He believed he was called to the revolt. 
he stated, was not Christ crucified? Convinced that the great day of judgment was at hand, and that he should commence the great work, Turner took the eclipse of the sun to mean that I should arise and prepare myself and slay thy enemies with their own weapons. <laughs>